Purdy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to ask about this government's failure to act on climate change. Last week, we were shocked to hear the Minister of Environment walk back a timeline to proclaim the Coastal Protection Act. He doubled down last night in estimates. A piece of legislation which has seen ongoing consultation since it was passed in 2019 with all party support from this House. The minister revealed recently that this was prompted by questions and correspondence from coastal landowners. And in response, the minister has decided to pause the rollout until he receives that buy-in. While the minister waits for buy-in, landowners are taking advantage of this delay to advance dangerous developments on our coast. Why is the Premier allowing developers to dictate when we protect our coastline? The Honourable Premier. M Mr. Speaker, the, the work that the, uh, the Minister of the Environment is doing is, uh, is, is, is country leading, Mr. Speaker. The, table, the legislation that we tabled with the goals, Mr. Speaker, that leads the country, Mr. Speaker. We are committed uh, to, preserving, to preserving this planet. This province is surrounded by 13,000 kilometres of coastline. We love our shorelines, our beaches, our incredible hiking trails. Nova Scotians hold our coastline very, very dear, Mr. Speaker, as do we. We understand the climate is changing. We understand that the uh, severity of the storms is intensifying. We know that there's work to be done, Mr. Speaker. The minister is doing that, is doing that work, and I support him in every aspect. The Honourable Leader, there's no Democratic Party on their first supplementary. Let's be clear, our 13,000 kilometres of coastline are not protected, even though there's an act that protects them because this government is dragging its feet. Mr. Speaker, Nova Scotians know that it is necessary to meet our climate targets to prevent climate catastrophe. Despite these strong goals and targets and the numerous actions laid out in the climate plan, our path from here to 2030 is very unclear. What needs to happen by 2024, 2025? This week we heard from the Minister of Natural Resources and Renewables that the government's plan to meet these targets is to double down on biomass and natural gas, more carbon, more fossil fuels. This government can say all the right things, but their actions tell a different story. How can the Premier say he's tackling the climate crisis without any credible path to 2030? The Honourable Premier. Mr. Speaker, there's, there's certainly a, a transition before us. There's no question about that. And, and our grid in, in, in 2030 will look different than it does today. And we, we have to have, you know, we have to, we have to understand that it will be different and there'll be multiple parts to our grid. You know, we'll have a discussion about how much solar, we need batteries, legislation just passed through this house, how much wind, how much hydro. Wouldn't it be nice if Muskrat Falls finally delivered for Nova Scotian ratepayers? There's a lot to discuss on that and it sits right at the feet of the NDP uh, government. Where the Muskrat Falls the debacle really began, Mr. Speaker. So we know the grid will change. There will be some biomass on the grid, uh, Mr. Speaker. There will be. Might even be nuclear, Mr. Speaker. We're open to all these things because we know it's important that we get it right, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party on her final supplementary. So no plan. 43% of our province's total greenhouse gas emissions come from electricity generation alone, and I'll table that. We must stop burning coal in order to meet our climate goals, and the Premier has the duty to find a credible path to do this. However, the Premier said yesterday of uh, the only researched and costed plan to do this, quote, I would say I'm not optimistic about the Atlantic Loop. The Premier must put forward a path to getting this province off coal. And if it's not the Atlantic Loop, I'd like him to tell us what it is. The Honourable Premier. Mr. Speaker, some pretty, <coughs> some pretty serious paraphrasing happening right now. First, uh, on, the, on the Minister's uh, behalf there, and certainly on mine, Mr. Speaker. I'm not optimistic about the Atlantic Loop. I don't, I'm not shy about that. There's a, uh, I'll be optimistic when the federal government comes forward and says that they will pay Nova Scotia ratepayers the same respect that they paid to Newfoundland ratepayers, Mr. Speaker. The federal government has a role in this. The NDP has a role in this, too. They started that Muskrat Falls situation, Mr. Speaker, and a lot of this rests at that fee. But we're looking forward, Mr. Speaker. We know the transition is difficult. We know there's going to be some highs and lows in that path, but we are committed to getting there, Mr. Speaker, and that's what matters to Nova Scotians.